What you see on your lab panel could throw you a loop and completely set you back and actually be quite dangerous. So this video is purely informational. I am not a physician, I'm some guy on the internet, but I understand biochemistry and the most important thing that I wanna do is be able to articulate what is important for you to ask of your physician. So we're gonna talk about a fractionated LDL panel and what it looks like and what you need to be looking for in a very simple Term. I do want to make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon. And then after this video, there's a link down below to check out Thrive Market. So it's where I get all of the snacks that I like to eat when I'm on keto, when I'm fasting, or when I'm doing different kind of uh, paleo things or Whole30, whenever I'm experimenting on myself, which I'm always doing. So I highly recommend them. You get the food delivered right to your doorstep. A lot of times it ends up being more cost effective than the grocery store. And they're a huge supporter of this channel and make a lot of this content possible. So highly recommend that you check them out. Trust me, you you will not be sorry. They are awesome. Special link down below in the description. So you get your blood work back and your LDL is high. So you start freaking out thinking that you're automatically unhealthy. It doesn't necessarily have to be the case, right? You have to break it down into what is called a fractionated panel. So I encourage you to ask your doctor to get a fractionated panel, but I'll give you some tips throughout this video if you for some reason can't get a fractionated panel. So LDL has different sizes. We have large particle, very large particle, we have smaller particles, and they all do different things. So let's start with what is called pattern A large particle LDL, okay? When you get a typical LDL test, like regular LDL cholesterol, it's looking at what is called LDL-C, which is only the amount of cholesterol that the LDL is carrying, not the overall kinds of LDL. So large LDL is really not that bad. At first glance, we think, why would we want large LDL? LDL is bad. Bigger ones must be worse. Well, big LDL can't get into the little macrophages and get into the little lesions that would normally cause a problem, right? So what that means is large particle LDL simply carry cholesterol through the body, but they don't really deliver it anywhere bad because they can't fit into the places. So what you don't want to have happen is to have cholesterol weave itself ultimately into your arteries and accumulate cholesterol that way. That's how you end up with a foamy situation that can potentially result in plaque. Large particles can't fit into that, but they carry lots of cholesterol but they can't deliver it anywhere. It's like a ferry boat that's carrying a bunch of cholesterol, but it doesn't really drop it off anywhere. Whereas these little dinghies that can weave themselves in there, they're carrying small amounts of cholesterol and dropping it off bit by bit, triggering a slow, terrible situation. So these large pattern A LDL molecules, which you would see if you got a fractionated panel, are not the problem per se. So you typically want to be looking for a particle size larger than 223, what are called angstroms, okay? And this is characteristic of what is called a good pattern A LDL. But now let's talk about the ones that are actually bad. The little, small, dense ones. The little, small, dense ones, they get themselves just into the little issues and then they accumulate cholesterol there and they cause a problem along with an inflammatory response there. That's the issue. They don't carry much cholesterol, but the cholesterol they do carry causes a problem. Now, if you can't go and get a fractionated panel for whatever reason, maybe it's cost, maybe your doctor just won't do it, one of the indicators that you can find on a standard panel that might be correlated with small LDL is your triglyceride levels. If your triglyceride levels are high, and your LDL levels are normal, it could be an indicator that you're the LDL that you do have is smaller. Simply because we've seen in various studies that high triglyceride content in the blood is correlated with smaller, more dense LDL. So that could be a red flag for you to say, maybe I should spend a couple extra bucks and get the fraction in panel and see what my small levels actually are. So a small LDL is indicated by its size in angstroms at 217 angstroms or smaller. And that's considered bad. Typically the goal is about 117 or less nanomoles per liter. That's what you're really looking for with small LDL count. It's okay to have some, but you largely want to have the bigger ones. Another one that you want to add to the test is going to be called oxidized LDL. This isn't even typically on a fractionated panel, but you can add it on or ask your doctor to test for it. Oxidized LDL is the LDL that gets acted upon by an inflammatory response. Okay, so if LDL floats around in your bloodstream for a while, eventually it gets acted upon and becomes oxidized. This is really bad. This is the one that we don't want. There was a study that was published in the journal Circulation took a look at middle-aged, seemingly apparently healthy men 
Well, they found that if they had high levels of oxidized LDL, they were 4.5 times more likely to have a cardiovascular event. That's pretty significant. So oxidized LDL might just be the biggest thing we look at in general, because that factors in the other external factors that are playing a role on LDL. But then let's talk about LDLP versus LDLC for one second. LDLC, again, the primary reading you get on a basic panel. It measures your LDL cholesterol. Well, LDLP measures the overall particle count. So let me explain something. Let's say, for example, you have a bunch of really big LDL particles. They're big, so that means they carry a lot of cholesterol. So if you were to get an LDL-C test, your LDL cholesterol would read really high because the cholesterol component of your LDL would be high. But what that test doesn't tell you is that it's being carried by large molecules that can't really do anything anyway because they're so big, right? They're just so big and clumsy, they can't actually deliver them into the little bad spots they would need to deliver them to to be bad. Okay, but on the contrary, what if your LDL levels seem normal? Well, it could be the fact that you have a bunch of small LDL, and small LDL are small, so they can't carry much cholesterol. So even if you had a high amount of small LDL, the overall amount of cholesterol, total cholesterol that would show up on your blood work, might not be that much, so it would never be cause for alarm, except for the fact that a large percentage of the cholesterol that's there is going to do bad things. Whereas on the contrary, someone that has a high level of LDL and is freaking out, they might have it attached to such large particle that it's never gonna cause a problem. That's why it's so important to not just pay attention to the LDLC. Okay, there's red flags, but your triglycerides are a stronger red flag than your typical LDL count. That's just a quick snapshot of where you're at. Otherwise, you need to dive a little bit deeper. And we're starting to see in the medical community that more and more physicians are looking at a fractionated panel as we just investigate this more and understand how it works within the body. Remember, HDL and LDL are carriers. They are not the cholesterol itself. Cholesterol is cholesterol. They just ride on the boat and go to different places. What we really need to fractionate and break down is what kind of boats are in your body. I'll see you tomorrow.